good getting into that. I wanted to talk today about cameras because it's a subject that I'm definitely not an expert on, but it's an interest of mine. It's for a while it was basically my primary non-tech based hobby, even though cameras are totally tech, but they're not computers. So I know I've talked a little bit about what I have. Uh, I am currently talking to you through my Sony Alpha 6000. I'm technically recording this via my laptop. I have a video capture device, uh, but I'm also recording this on the camera itself. I've always been curious to see which one actually looks better. I have a confidence monitor down here, and yeah. So I started with photography, oh, I would have been six or seven when my mom got me my first camera. Um, to, I'm old, not that old, but I'm not super young, which means my first camera was a film camera. It was color, but it had no flash. I was terrible with it. I'm still terrible with film cameras. I have yet, ooh, kitty required. See, it's a good kitten internet. Uh, I had and still have yet to actually succeed at taking film out of a camera and developing it without having something ruined. Uh, my, as mentioned, my first film camera, I was six or seven. Uh, we couldn't really afford much because development costs so much, so I was basically given one roll of film with a camera and anything else had to be paid for myself. So I think I had developed a total of two rolls of film with that camera. I was given another camera about eight or nine, I want to say, with another roll of film. Each of them basically ended up the same way. I got two or three pictures out of it, and the rest was ruined due to stupid me or stupid film stuff. I even handed my camera to somebody else. They tried to take the film out after rewinding it by hand because no automatic rewind either. And still got film ruined. I, yeah, I have no idea why. Uh, but really, my hobby of photography started significantly later. Uh, it would have started in 1996, I want to say. Let me look this up really fast. Looks like 1996. So my first digital camera was 1996. That's, it was one of the first consumer digital cameras that actually took off. Uh, my father actually bought it, and both of us were sharing it. I believe he bought the camera and I bought the memory card. It was using a compact flash memory card. Uh, it was an Epson Photo PC. I'm not sure of the exact version. Um, it looked kind of like an SLR-like, which is probably the reason why I tend to prefer that style. I took a lot of photos with that. Uh, my father bought it with his tax return money because he can't save money he couldn't save his any type of money whatsoever and i knew it and started kind of nudging him toward spending money on things that i think both of us would have liked thus the camera so since there was no film involved i could take as many pictures as i want i had bought that memory card and oh boy did i fill it over and over and over and over and over again i was basically the primary user of the camera as a result of well, I'm pretty sure my father actually bought it for me and he just didn't want to admit it. Because he basically handed it to me and I was using it for an extended period of time. Uh, the camera could only take pictures at, I think the maximum resolution was 800 by 600. It might have been 640 by 480, but I'm pretty sure it was 8 by 6. Um, actually, no, that's not right. see what does google say 1600 by 1200 actually uh it was at the time an extremely good camera it didn't have a very good zoom it didn't really have much of anything very good compared to now but the photos looked like photos um i'll try to find a photo and edit it in here so i can show you uh there i swear that's a photo Hopefully editing me in the future will put one in. Anyway, um, I used that photo for, or that camera for an extended period of time. 
It's what got me into the hobby, basically. I really liked it. One, it had a flash, which is kind of needed to take photos during any time that's not bright and sunny. And two, it was cheap. I mean, sure, we had to pay a lot of money for that camera. I want to say it was like a nearly $800 camera. But all that would take is 100 rolls of film to make up that price. And I'm pretty certain I took more photos than 100 rolls of film would have taken. Not to mention, I kept ruining film anyway, so what difference does that make? I loved that thing a lot, but it eventually started having some problems. Uh, namely, it had a dead pixel in the um, CCD, and I kept having memory cards die. I was down to my last memory card at the time. This was while I was in college. And I had a trip planned. Was that the trip to Austria, maybe? Uh, when did the S3IS come out? Anyway, so I decided at some point, it must have been in time for my Norwegian trip, I decided, my second Norwegian trip, I decided I wanted a new camera. I was working at the time, I had the money for it, and my existing digital camera is starting to get long in the tooth. Not to mention, it couldn't record video. And that was something I really wanted to try to do, was actually record small bits of video. And you have to keep in mind, this is pre-smartphone era. My only other camera was a flip phone. It was a uh, uh, Razer. Yeah, it was a Moto Razer. So that's not exactly a feasible video camera at the time. It could take a couple of really crappy photos, and that was about it. So I wanted a real photo camera, and I wanted to be able to record some videos. So I bought a, I believe it was a Canon S3IS. It was the best camera I can find for the price point I wanted, which precluded me having interchangeable lenses. I like the camera. I used it for quite some time. Uh, it felt right in my hands. I don't like small cameras because my hands... Cramp, it's the same reason why I don't like GameCube controllers. The original GameCube controllers, not WaveBirds. Because they're too small for me. My hands feel like they're cramping up if I'm holding on to something that small. So I knew I needed to aim for something in roughly that size. Unfortunately, that one was probably a little too big. Because the problem came up, basically, I stopped carrying it around in places because it was too big. Probably that would have been... Uh, let's see... After I got my first smartphone is when I started using my smartphone camera more and more. Because that's what was convenient. The best camera you can have is the one that's with you, after all. And this type of camera is what was with me. Not this phone. This phone's a lot better than the S3IS was. But you get the idea. Uh, so I started using smartphone cameras more. And then I lost my S3IS. I found it again, then lost again. I actually have no idea where it's at in this house. I know I've seen it in this house, so it's around here somewhere. And it used AA batteries, so I wouldn't have had batteries in it. I had a case for it and put the batteries underneath the case. It's in its case somewhere. I've not found where. Anyway, I decided it was time for a change. I had purchased a video capture device of which I should take a photo of. I can do that. Let's see. It's not reachable right now, is it? Nope. So I'll just put in an image that I've found online of the video capture device. And I wanted to be able to run something for role-playing. So what I bought... And this one I actually have handy. Is this. This is a Sony Handycam. It is a camcorder. It is not a traditional digital camera. It is still digital. It is recording on SD card. Uh, SD card slots there. It's a full size SD card. Um, works like this. Battery is currently. Oh. Battery is not dead. I did charge it earlier. Although it did actually fully die on me, so I have to set date and time and stuff. Yes, you can set daylight savings, that's fine. Uh, your month day. 
I can totally show you what I'm doing here. Anyway, this is a, I'm just going to say it's thin. That works. Yes, yes, yes. Good for you. So, you can see what the area looks like behind you. See? Helps if I hold it straight. There's no memory card in, which is the reason why it's blinking in the middle. Uh, it's fully charged, in fact. That's nice. So, this was the camera that I had bought. I had found it on... Was this an eBay or an Amazon? Oh, I don't remember now. I had found it online. It was really cheap. I think this was like 70 or $80 because this was already fairly old at the time I bought it. So it's an HDR CX380. And this was the quote unquote good one that I can find. The reason being, it makes it a little ditty. Um, the reason being is that one, I wanted a camera that I can actually have a confidence monitor on. And two, it actually has a microphone input. So the reason why I bought this was because of vlogging, basically. You gonna focus? Uh, but now you gonna focus? Should move this toward the center so it will actually focus. There we go. See, microphone. Also, it has a mini HDMI, which I had not used yet. Um, I bought this so I can vlog. Um, this was after I had started Vita. This was my first Vita purchase. So each time I do a Vita, I may I usually make some type of purchase to make my vlogs better, more awesome. I haven't this time, but... And what I wanted to do was basically walk around like this. Hi, how are you? I should probably actually put an SD card in here so I can record anything. Oh, well, doesn't matter. And my housemate's coming in. Pausing for a moment. So, um... After I'd purchased this, I had decided I had the taste of what a good camera could be. This is not a good photo camera, by the way. I wasn't intending to buy this as a photo camera. This was supposed to be strictly video and was supposed to replace my, let's see, that would have been at the time my, was I still rocking the Galaxy S1? Or was that my Galaxy Nexus by that point? I think it was the Galaxy Nexus by then. So this was still a much better video camera than the Galaxy Nexus. This could actually record 1080p. The Galaxy Nexus, I want to say, was 1024 by 768 at most. Might have been 720p. Either way, um, but this has a really tiny sensor. And one thing dealing with cameras is that the sensor size matters a lot for when it comes to quality. Megapixels doesn't really matter. I mean, to some extent it does. If you have a half megapixel camera, it's not going to be very good, even if it has a really nice sensor. But yeah. So that's when I switched to this camera, the one I'm talking to you right now from. This camera, I'll just do a quick video recording from this. So this camera here is my Sony Alpha 6000. So this camera here is my Sony Alpha 6000. It's a very nice camera to me. It actually has interchangeable lenses, which is nice. Uh, has zoom. It does have a flash. It's just hiding. It's here. Let's see, can I reach the flash without hitting anything? There we go. See, flash. It's not a very good flash, but that's okay. It's good enough. Um, I actually don't own any lenses for this, for reference. Uh, this is the kit lens that it came with. And, well, this is what I use. So, anyway, I had started role-playing it around the time I had bought this camera. And initially, I had set it up where I was using a webcam. I should try to find that. This webcam. So... This is a Logitech C910, I want to say. This 910? Doesn't say on the camera. Uh, let's see. Can you focus on this? Or is it too shiny for you? It is too shiny for you. Oh, there we go. It's all smudged and stuff. So this is a Logitech C910. It's fine for the most part. I still use this for um, when you actually see any of my live streams or video game recordings, this is actually what I'm re using my face camera with. It's a perfectly cromulent webcam. I've thought about upgrading it recently just because it seems to start, it seems to be having some power issues intermittently. Uh, but I was using this for role-playing because I have one player that plays remote and 
they need to be able to see things. Uh, to be fair, they mostly need to be able to see the DM, but um, if they're the ones running the game, they should probably be able to see everybody, and it's still good for everybody to see everybody, in my mind. So, I had decided that it was time to buy a video capture device. One, I always wanted a video capture device anyway. I've had a couple over the years, but nothing that can capture HDMI. And two, I bought a micro uh, mini HDMI to HDMI adapter, or micro HDMI to HDMI. Whatever. This output thingy right here. This one. Focus, there we go. This one. Um, and then I hooked up this camera with it. While I was planning on doing that, I bought the camera that I had just recorded for you, the Alpha 6000. And my plan was to basically keep this camera to be on the tripod for the video recordings for D&D, and then the camera that I'm speaking with is basically my photo camera and the camera I walk around every day with. Turns out that this is certainly usable, but the field uh, the field of view on this isn't very good. Field of view on my kit lens that I'm talking through right now, on the other hand, is quite a bit better. As a result, I ended up using this for role playing. So my nice shiny, somewhat expensive Sony Alpha 6000 is primarily used to capture role-playing and used as an overpriced webcam. So why do I like cameras? Well, it's hard to describe. I really like taking nature photography, and especially of landscapes. I find waterfalls breathtakingly beautiful. Uh, kitties are also very beautiful. And I like having a camera that will allow me to share these memories with other people. I think if it weren't for the internet, I would probably not be as big into cameras as I am now. I mean, I had internet access back when I had my first digital camera, and I shared photos that I took with it. Maybe not a whole bunch initially, that's because I didn't have any place to put the photos. I mean, most free websites were like two or four megabytes. A photo is almost that much. But now, I... I pretty much take photography, uh, take photography, I pretty much take photos so I can show other people. So I think that's about it for cameras. Uh, my next planned purchase is a different lens for this camera. I want a wide angle lens, that way I can bring the camera closer to the players and get better v looks on people's faces. As it stands now, the um, angle or the field of view that you see for role-playing night ends up being really wide and you can't focus very well on a lot of things. And I can totally improve that. Um, not to mention, that would be really nice for landscape photography. So it's kind of mixed use. Anyway, let me grab this. Hopefully it won't be too shaky. Uh, oh yeah, I have, a pow I have my... Alpha 6000 currently plugged into power using a very cheap adapter, so I'm trying to be careful to not unplug anything. There's the Boo Kitty. Meryl? Meryl? What is it with my cats and trying to go after the camera? Anyway, I will see you tomorrow, Internet. Oh, really, cat? Oh, um, one last thing. The reason why I don't take this on walks when I go out and taking a walk is that there's no image stabilization in this camera. Um, for the Alpha 6000, Sony intended for you to buy a lens that had image stabilization. I don't own one of those. Later revisions of this camera, or upgrades, or whatever you want to call it, do does have a, they do have optical image stabilization, but this one does not. Hence the wiggle, and if I'm walking around, it gets jumpy. Also, I think I might have accidentally unplugged the... Yep, this is loose. The micro HD micro. Good night.